Hello, everyone. This is take two. I don't know if it's going to show uh, the first part. We started and it, it just got interrupted. So today we're going to talk about a very sen sensitive topic. What should you do if you have a spouse who is always threatening to divorce you? I'm Raluca Hania. I offer family law, immigration and estate planning services. And I'm here with my office and marketing manager, Nina Clear. And thank you for your likes and shares and your comments. We really appreciate your support. Okay, divorce or even the thought of it can be a very sensitive topic. So we hope that any information we present regarding this is respectful and understanding to both sides. That's right. Many people feel like they failed if they even consider divorce. Others might feel rejected by their spouse. I want to be sure that people understand if you are being abused physically, emotionally, or mentally, there are community services who can help you and, you're, and you should contact the police if that's the case. You may have to make very different plans for safety reasons than a person who is in an unhappy relationship that they want to end. So we are not going to give you advice on what to do if you're being abused. That's another topic. Neither of us is a therapist, and we, but we enjoy helping others and providing this uh, information to you. With that being said, one of the first things I would suggest you do if your partner says they want a divorce is to seek a good therapist to help you decide what do you want to do going forward. And what do you mean by a good therapist? Someone you feel comfortable with, who is kind yet directive. Someone who helps you to see the truth in your situation. Some may have a spouse who is not only not kind, but is abusive. Because you have lived with it for years, you may not recognize that. A good therapist should help you recognize if you're being abused and deal with that. They should help you realize you are not a failure. You may also want to discuss if you would like to get divorced. And if not, talking to your spouse about going to couples counseling may be helpful. Okay, so seek out a therapist. Anything else? If this announcement is made in the heat of the argument, I would wait until you are both calmer and have a rational discussion. A divorce, if either, you, either of you truly wants it, um, should be a thoughtful decision presented in a planned conversation, not in the heat of an argument. Okay, so get therapy. Try to be a thoughtful adult in making a decision about divorce. So what should you do legally? We talked previously about getting a post-nuptial agreement. This is something you can enter into after you're married to help preserve your marriage, which may make asset division easier if the marriage does end. So if you decide to want to that you want to get a divorce, you or your spouse um, say they are not willing to work on the marriage and want a divorce, the first thing I should do, I would do, is to consult a family law attorney. Often I hear people um, talking and saying that they would work, they want to work through themselves. Right. So like they can avoid like, the expense of yeah. an attorney. Let's work on it together. We'll, we'll um, it but if children or marital property is involved, I would hire an attorney as soon as you decided to do that because um, many times people say we should do it ourselves, but then they go and hire their own attorney. So like one and, person did that, yeah. And make sure you're not blindsided by that. So talking to an attorney as soon as possible is in your best interest. Having a consultation with an attorney, even if you need to pay a nominal fee, can help you feel more confident in your position and ensure you're not taking advantage of um, during the divorce proceedings. Right. So a lot of times women especially don't want to seem combative, so they won't get an attorney. Yes. And that is not in your best interest, even if you just talk to one. Anything else you recommend? Um, I also recommend that my clients uh, get their own bank account. They should also be aware of the marital assets, including any retirement accounts and the amount of money in all the bank accounts. And what else is helpful? 
if the marital home is going to be sold or even if it is not and if you have not handled the bills regularly or don't know how much it costs to buy or rent a home I would recommend that you educate yourself about those things. And what do you mean by that? Um, if you don't have the bills to review, you can call the utility companies and find out an average of your home for your home for the utilities if they cannot give you the right the exact information. As to the other, let me give you an example. I knew a woman who was going to obtain sub a substantial sum from the sale of the marital home. However, she had a job that paid minimum wage and the homes where she was looking to buy were very expensive because of the location she wanted to leave. So she thought any bank would be willing to give her the money because she was going to put a um, high amount in the proceeds as down payment. So I suggested she go to talk to a banker to determine where she needed to be financially in order to purchase a home with a monthly payment she could afford. So she was absolutely shocked by she, what she learned. The banker was able to show her how much her payment would be monthly and they were above her income. And even with a large down payment and, and um, she could not afford that, that um, payment. So he, the banker gave her a preliminary idea of how much the bank would approve her for, for a mortgage. And information like that is invaluable. Other areas you might want to gather information include if you won't be covered by your spouse health insurance anymore, you should determine how much that will cost. If your car is not in your name or not paid off, you should figure out what will entail to change as well as how much monthly car payments, the car payments would be and the car insurance will be. And just so you know, we've had both male and female clients, but statistically, females, their, like, self-worth, not self-worth, but monetary, monetary worth goes down in a divorce more than a man's. Yes. And so that's why we're saying she, but this applies to either male or females. So is yes. there anything else you wish your clients had done when they came to you about divorce? Uh, make copies of important documents and keep them in a safe place, preferably outside the home. Also, if you have children, have a written agreement about who will claim whom on the taxes. I've known couples where they race to file their taxes to claim their children without knowing what the other one has done. Remember, if things are agreed upon in writing and one party doesn't uphold that, a remedy is always asking for the judge for contempt. This could include a fine or jail time. Uh, rather than feeling like you need to make your spouse or soon to be ex-spouse obey court orders, have the judge to do that for you. Any other tips? I would highly recommend you have a strong support system to rely on. Though I would caution you against using them for advice. While they may have gone through a divorce, your situation is unique to you. And the best advice is what comes from your attorney. The final piece of advice I would give is to be honest with your attorney and to listen and follow their advice. There is nothing that will hurt your situation more than if you would go to the court and the other side brings up evidence that your attorney is completely unaware of. Also, if your attorney tells you to do or not to do something, you need to follow what they say. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And please, please contact us with any questions you might have. Um, leave us a comment or send us a message, and uh, we'll respond to you the best as we can. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.